Fortnite solos can be super frustrating. With the influence of RNG, random players with snipers, bad zones, and just so much more garbage that can influence and even ruin your game. I thought the trash got taken out on Sundays. Seems like it's every day on Fortnite, jeez! It can be really difficult to improve your game sense in Fortnite solos, especially in Chapter 2 with the lack of unique mobility items. Welcome to the third installment of our What Would You Do series where we review and analyze pro gameplay and ask you, the viewer, what you would do in their situation so you can learn from their decisions, both right and wrong, and improve your game sense. How is it going, everyone? I'm your host, Coco Loco. You can follow me on the Instagram at Coco Meddler. And in this video, we'll be reviewing some solo cash cup gameplay and have you, yes you, make the decisions. We'll be going through and discussing a bunch of different decisions from Fortnite pro Benjamin Franklin. I mean, Benji Fishy in his 14th place run in the Solo Platform Cup. But real quick, before we get started, I've got a question for you. Are you looking to get better at Fortnite? If you said yes, then you need to check out ProGuides.com. On our website, we offer courses from some of the best pros like Mongrel and Benji, and we'll be creating new ones weekly, from advanced building and editing guides, to scrim courses, to controller courses, and just so much more. On top of this, we have articles and guides to help you stay on top of the meta. Finally, on top of all of this, we offer 24-7 on-demand coaching from some of the best players. So if you want to be the best, you have got to check out ProGuides.com. Last thing before we get into this amazing video, let's do today's question of the day. Today's question is, who do you think will be the best solo player in the next few months? Personally, I think Benji Fishy has been on a roll lately, and I wouldn't be shocked to see him on top in the upcoming months. We've also seen Cooler Aqua, one of the Duo World Cup champions, doing really well in Solo Cup, so don't be surprised if you see him performing as well. Let me know in the comments what you think, I'm really looking forward to reading what you have to say. You might know by now that we typically analyze a player's endgame and see what they do and why, but we noticed, thanks to your feedback, that we tend to neglect the early and mid game a bit in our analysis. So we'll be going through a full game here from Benji, where he places pretty high and does pretty dang well. We can see at the start, he's landing at retail. Landing at retail, you'll get a few opponents landing with you, but if you win all your fights or disengage, you'll end up in a great spot from the mid to late game. It might be worth it for some players and not worth it for others. For Benji, it is worth it. He discovered electricity. I think he'll be fine. Guess what? He's got amazing mechanics and rotations. But for those other players who are at a lower skill level, especially in a high point lobby early in the tournament, you know, it might be a bit too much. Benji sees this green skin with a better drop than him. In this stage of the tournament, Benji is able to play pretty aggressive and beat most of the players. However, the player has a better drop than him and will probably have better loot especially if they land at the same house. So what would you do right here? Would you fight this player and go for the spawn fight for the limb point or stay away and push later on? Well, the answer is stay away and loot up. Oh my gosh. Even though Benji wants to get kills, it is way too risky to W key immediately on his drop by landing on someone who probably has a gun already. Spawn 50-50s are just that, 50-50s. So unless you're on a complete throwaway game, you should avoid taking these fights. Benjamin Franklin lands on the back corner house and a player decides to drop on top of his building. However, oh, Benji Fishy knows he'll be way better off as he studied this house and knows not only where all the spawns are, but how to get through them efficiently. Also, keep in mind the bottom of the house has a much better loot than the roof does. With his superior loot and materials, Benji cleans up the kill quickly by playing it safe, pushing up slowly, and finding the right time to strike. At this point, Benji has his first kill, but his loot is a bit lackluster. However, he hears shots on the other side of retail where it might be a third-party opportunity. This brings up the question, should he push with his somewhat lackluster loot or loot up more and push when he's more confident in his loadout? What would you do here? Well, even though Benji is one of the most insane mechanical players in the world, bad loot can turn a fight bad really quick, regardless of how bad the opponents might be. Benji decides to stay back a bit and continue looting. Always continue looting if you don't feel confident in your loadout, and if you actually have the time to be able to loot. Don't loot if it's late in the game, instead try to find impact frags. 
but early in the game like this, it is a safe and better option to go for more loot. You look cute with the loot, let's go, let's get some loot, baby. After his search for loot, he finds a burst AR and manages to get some more material as well. And he hears a ton of gunshots. So guess what, ladies and gentlemen? It is going down! Benji spots the high ground player putting pressure on someone's box and assumes this is the player winning the fight. In this situation, would you go for the shots to try and laser this player and take control of the fight or wait until they're done with their scuffle to clean up the second kill? Benji chooses to fight here with his insane aim and hits a clean laser on the high ground player, asserting dominance on both of these players. Woohoo, he is going for it. One player gets eliminated in the fight, so it's up to Benji to snatch high ground like you should do in any early game fight, and he heads down to pressure the player, knowing he has probably got better health. Guess what, he cleans up that kill relatively quick. At this point, Benji is all done clearing out retail, and he's ready to finish looting and make his way into the mid game. After checking his map, Benji knows the zone is relatively close, so he has time to loot up and farm a bit more. He does this and makes his way in nicely. At this point, he has a dream loadout with a purple scar, pump, and an SMG with two big pots and three minis, and pretty decent materials. Checking the second zone, it's somewhat close, so he has a bit of a leeway. Should he rotate early or stay back and farm a bit more and play edge zone? Benji knows the answer is to rotate early and get in, so it's so important to position yourself in the center if possible for the second through fourth zones, so you can avoid getting held in storm or even getting bad future zones. Keep that in mind when you're playing in mid game. If you're able to, get in as soon as possible so you can stay safe from being held in the storm. It's worth doing, especially in the early zones like the second and third. So ladies and germs, this brings us to a really tough decision. Should Benji go center zone where the island is or play on the outside and hope he gets the zone? The water plays a huge role and rotating through it is risky. Well, considering the odds of each, it's more likely that the zone ends up on the island than anywhere else. Simply due to the fact that it's in the center of the zone. This is a risky play, but setting up in the center island gives him the best chance of survival. Benji sets up a mid-game base on the island by mining some stones that he found nearby, so he's pretty much using zero materials to build this. This is a subtle yet super effective tip. If you're ever in mid-game and you need to set up a base, try to find stones, metal trees, or anything you can farm to refresh your materials, build near or around it, and mine it so you get the materials back that you spend building your base. We can see how Benji is still completely full on materials and has a pretty decent mid-game base. So at this point, there's a knock on the door. Who is it? It's the next zone. Get ready. With his center zone position, he's basically guaranteed a decent zone, at least being really close to it, and that's the case here. It's pretty unlucky that the zone didn't end up on his island, but it's all right. It's all good. Namaste. Here's an interesting decision. Do you rotate through the water here, or do you stay back and rotate with the pack? Benji can rotate early here pretty confidently, knowing that the other players on the island will avoid shooting him because they know he can hold them in the storm if they rotate later on. And avoiding rotating with a group will help him stay away from the griefers. Making these difficult decisions in a split second is honestly based on your experience and how much you VOD review to learn from these types of rotations. Weighing the pros and cons, Benji can rotate with confidence here. Also, note how Benji immediately makes a dash for the center of the zone. If you get to the center early and your builds are fully done before many people come near, your odds of getting focused go down exponentially. Nobody wants to W key a fully built brick or metal base. We ain't the big bad wolf up in here, nah, we're trying to live. Benji ultimately decides to set up under the bridge as it's a pretty well hidden area. He can break the brick support of the bridge to refresh the materials, so he builds his base with it. This is the same concept as before, building around things you can farm to save your materials during mid-game. That was a pretty textbook zone, and Benji basically waited it out and went for shots when possible. The fourth zone pops up here, and it's honestly as good as it gets. In the fourth zone, you want to set up on the edge. In this meta, playing center zone in the fourth zone basically guarantees you have to rotate to the fifth which is half in and half out. But if you play the edge, there's a chance that you get the zone and you're able to just chill in an amazing position. In this low mobility meta, playing edge is the fourth and the best strategy. 
With his fourth zone position pretty much set, Benji continues to look for any shots he can get on players rotating. With pretty much the best position he can get here, it's an optimal time to go for shots. Each shot he's shooting on a focused player is a chance to get an a limb. The fifth zone comes in and it's not on our boy Benji Frankie. Oh well, it was worth a shot. Would you rotate early and wait for the people around you to rotate? Well, Benji rotates immediately knowing that he'll get targeted if he's with the rest of the crowd. Rotating early is often believed to make people focus you, but if you're further in the zone, then they have no good reason to, as you'll be able to hold them in zone later if they do. Usually the first people to rotate in mid to late game are the ones who get the best position. One not so smart player tries to focus Benji, but he gets sniped in the face. That's what happens when you open your box for too long in the later zones. Either way, this player probably would have gotten sprayed with ARs had he continued. Would you grab this loot, which should only take a few seconds, or continue your rotation? Well, Benji pushes in to get his free loot. If someone dies and you're near them, you can grab their loot as long as you're careful of other players and the rotation path that you'll have to take. He's already ahead of most players on the rotation, so sparing a few seconds to improve his setup shouldn't hurt too much. From here, it's a pretty textbook fifth zone rotation. Benji carries a ton of heals when he's able to, because getting shot at is pretty much unavoidable in this zone. He doesn't get sprayed too much, but even if he does, he has a ton of materials and shield items, so he could get back up in no time. At this point, Benji looks for a few shots and potentially kills, but it's not time to frag out yet. This is when you cautiously W key. You can go for shots or even try to eliminate someone, but don't be dumb about it. Don't go psycho on a player who has 200 HP and great loot, but if you laser someone to 50 health and you have a shot at a kill, then it's fair to take it. Our boy Benji gets the first moving zone after playing edge. This is great. He's able to rotate early and start tunneling before most players are even close. Just by making it to this point, he's already in the top 25, and he's hardly even gotten into any action yet. However, at this point, his materials aren't in tip-top shape, so it's a good time to look around for any easy impact frags that he can get. He's not in urgent need of one right this second, but it's important for him to look around and try to get shots if he's able to. Knowing that he's ahead of the zone, Benji uses a low material tunnel with wood to get ahead and avoid using his strong materials. The sixth zone is pretty simple, just get ahead of the zone and look for shots on the people behind. This is the optimal time to get elimination points, so getting ahead of the zone is absolutely crucial. He makes it to the seventh zone while hardly using any strong materials apart from the metal box that he set up once he's in. Benji has been searching around for an impact frag for a while now, but at this point he pretty much needs one. The eighth zone starts and he's on the hunt for another kill. He runs completely out of materials and it's desperation time, oh god. This is when you head to the low ground layer and find any kill you can get. He starts fighting a player and unfortunately gets one tacked. It's unfortunate and he probably should have won the fight, but the player got a pretty lucky shot so there's not much you can do about that, aka garbage. <coughs> Is it Sunday again? Oh gosh, regardless of the day of the week, that was a good game with the top 15 finish and two kills. Ooh la la, I like it. While it wasn't a perfect ending and he probably could have gone on to win it had he beaten that player, Benji still demonstrated some of the best strategies. So let's quickly recap what we talked about. To start in the early game, it is important to know your loot route and land in the most optimal part of your area. That way you can avoid dying to the 50-50s. We saw how Benjamin Franklin got better loot than his first opponent who tried to 50-50 and got the easy kill. Second, it's important to prioritize loot over kills in early game. While elimination points are great, it's not worth throwing away a perfectly good game because you got greedy. Don't be greedy, man. Benji demonstrates some great discipline, grabbing more loot when he isn't confident in his loadout, and he goes on to destroy his second opponent. Third, in the early zones like the second and third, it's important to try and get to the center. Benji played from the middle island, which was in the center, and that was probably the best idea. While he still didn't get an amazing zone, he had the highest chance to get the zone since he was in the center. Fourth, we can see how whenever he gets a far zone, he rotates pretty much immediately in both mid and late game. He also carries a bunch of heals, so even if he does get hit pretty hard, he can heal back up to full in no time. Also note how in the moving zones, specifically the sixth, Benji stays ahead and uses wood instead of his stronger materials, as most people in front are looking back for eliminations and not at other front players. This is the optimal time to use your wood. 
Then, when he reaches the zone, he builds one box out of a strong material, since everyone is now in and looking at one another instead of behind. However, his rotation using wood might seem weird, but it was actually optimal and probably saved him most of his strong materials. This is a lesser known trick that pretty much only pros use. Finally, in the latest parts of the game, it's all pretty much based on staying ahead of the zone, going for impact frags, and focusing on saving your materials whenever you can. Overall, while the result wasn't as good as it should have been, this was still a beautiful game from Benji and says a lot about the strategies and tricks that pros use to dominate in solos. Let us know what you think of this game that we showed, and also let us know in the comments if you like this full game format, as opposed to showing shorter clips of multiple games. That being said, thank you all so much for watching this video. We really hoped it helped you out. Go into your next solo game confident, knowing that you've got some of the best strategies from Benji himself. And with enough practice, you can be dominating in cash cups just like the pros do. If you enjoyed the video, we'd appreciate it a bunch if you could drop a like, subscribe, and maybe even share the video with a few friends as well. Remember to tell us in the comments what you'd like to see next on our channel. We read all your comments and we'll consider every idea. Also, be sure to check out ProGuides.com for some more amazing exclusive content that you won't find anywhere else. Once again, it's been your host, Coco Loco. Follow me on the Instagram at Coco Medler. Guys, stay positive, keep working, keep trying your best, and I will see you later. Peace. For some reason, I am getting the urge right now to fly a kite with a key attached to it in the rain.